really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. And as the church continues to grow, people are driving miles to hear the truth. Yes, I drove an hour to get here, but it's worth it, and we try to do it every week. I think we've definitely developed a reputation here. I think folks know who we are. Uh, they're familiar with what we teach. Um, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of territory to be covered. I think things are going wonderful. Right. And I really think that Johnny is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life, and he's got two sons that are going to follow in his steps. So right. I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. I despise, hate, detest, and loathe the Church of Christ and everything about it. I, I hate them. I really do. The better I get to know them, the more I hate them. I, I want to rid the world of the Churches of Christ. See why the atheists don't like the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services are 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. at 823 Starling Avenue. Watch them on TV in Martinsville at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and on Sunday on WGSR. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Real Local, WGSR 47.1 in high definition. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babbled? Are you tired of this commercial? So am I. 
Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Don't flex your muscles. Flex your mind. Watch a word from the Lord. Thursday nights at 9. I did it for science. In the Church of Christ, we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we, therefore we will intermingle. We'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth and black or white regardless of what your nationality is, is not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. What the? What the? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you, and uh, appreciate you staying tuned. We had a little, little delay there, but hope you didn't turn it off. Uh, we are here. We're going to continue our study that we began last week. A uh, caller called in and uh, was talking about uh, the law not being taken away, and so we might touch on that just a little bit. But I want to continue with the thought process, if we could, pick up uh, with what we we're talking about last week about being blinded to the truth. Uh, but before we do that, I want to give you our content information very quickly. 250 the Boulevard, Eden, North Carolina is where we meet. Uh, you can reach me at 276-340-2653, or you can write to me at a word from the Lord at gmail.com. If you'd like a copy of the DVDs or any of these programs that we do, if you'd like a Bible study, please uh, 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 contact me. Uh, let me know uh, who you are and what you'd like, and we'd be, be glad to be of service any way we can. If you're in the Martinsville, the Danville area, 823 Starling Avenue in Martinsville, is where you can uh, meet with the saints there, 120 American Legion in uh, Danville. It's where you can meet with the saints there, and uh, we want to encourage you to, to go and uh, 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 participate and uh, be involved in their, in, their, in their studies. I know you'll be warmly welcome, and uh, I know you'll get a lot, a lot out of it. Of course, also WHIG-TV in, uh, 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 out of Rocky Mount. Uh, Brother Johnny Robertson is, is uh, broadcasting from there on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m., and I think that's fixing to change. I, I mean... Uh, well, I know it is, uh, so uh, probably should just stop advertising the time on that. I, I think it's going to be on Thursday nights uh, at 10 o'clock. Uh, so uh, uh, just remember at WHIG TV and watch, and watch for uh, announcements concerning the time change is what we're talking about. All right, now friends, last week, last week we kind of started off with this, with this idea of walking through snow and how you might get snow blind, snow uh, snow. Uh, blindness from from exposure to too much light, but that's not the case when it comes to the Bible. When it comes to the Bible, people are blinded from the light, not because of the light, but from, in other words, to prevent from seeing the light. And we talked about that. We talked about in Second Corinthians chapter uh, uh, four that uh, uh, Paul said that the the gospel. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, uh, whom, in whom the God of this world hath blinded their minds that they, might not, uh, that they might not see, that they might not be able to uh, uh, see the glorious gospel. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to continue this thought process 
and we're actually going to, uh, hopefully, is our, as our goal, is get into some of the things or some of the ways in which people are blinded uh, from the truth. You know, we want to uh, be the, the individuals that are constantly helping you to see what the truth really is. And uh, I know the, the atheists and the agnostics and the agnostics don't like us to say that, that we have the truth. But, you know, friends, there is, a, there is a, a, an objective truth, a right and wrong, a stand for right and wrong, something that, that uh, defines good and evil and right and wrong and righteous and unrighteous and so forth. And that is the truth of God's Word, John 17, 17. Jesus said, Sanctify them with thy truth, thy word is truth. But we don't want individuals to be blinded to the truth. And it's our job really to help them see the light, to bring them out of the darkness that, that, that blinds them. All right? And so we, want, we uh, uh, want to help you to see that you may be having some snow blindness. You may be blinded to the knowledge of God's Word. <clears throat> Let's look <clears throat> again, excuse me, at John 8, verse 32, Jesus said to, the, uh, to those disciples and actually the Jews that believed on him, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And he's talking to them because they thought, in this context, they thought that because they were the uh, seed of Abraham, that they were actually uh, free. All right? He said, uh, because they answered and said, We be Abraham's seed whenever it binds to any man. How sayest thou that ye shall be made free? And he pointed out to them that you are the servants of sin. You are actually in bondage to sin, and you need Jesus Christ to set you free from that sin. Now, again, the atheist agnostics would say, no, I'm free, I, I do what I want to do. Well, you're still bonded to sin. You know, you're still tied to a chain that's called sin, and uh, that's weighing you down. You just don't know it. You're just uh, uh, too blind to see it. And a lot of individuals have that same blindness because they're blinded to the truth. Now, what we want to do is I'm going to try to skip ahead here to uh, uh, some of our, uh, our, our my, my slides here. And I want to jump on and I want to play this one video again that I played. We spent a lot of time developing the law <clears throat> and how the law actually uh, well, blinded the Jews to the truth of Christ. But I want you to see that, you know what, that a lot of people have the same problems today. They're blinded by tradition. They're blinded by their, what, their, what their father said. Listen again to what this man says about uh, uh, being blinded or, or yeah, be, uh, what he knows and where he gets his information from. Well, is that not going to play now? Oh, Mark, you know what it is? I need, uh, can you bring my other hard drive? It's in front of my bag there. In that little pocket there. Uh, I've got my wrong uh, hard drive hooked up here. Now, this gentleman, this gentleman, uh, uh, what he is going to say, and like I said, we played it last week, so... Uh, uh, we're not going to uh, spend a lot of time. But basically, we're talking about denominations. And, uh, and he said, we know that they got their, we got their name, or our fathers named them. And so what he's saying by that is, he's acknowledging, he's acknowledging that, that uh, it came from, from man. Now, friends, that, that's, a very dangerous, that's a very dangerous thing to do. That's a very dangerous thing to say that, well, I know that I got it from man, but I'm going, to, I'm going to stay with it. And so what we need to be concerned about is, are we being blinded to the truth because of something that our, that our ancestors or our fathers have taught us or, or caused us to believe? I tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and skip on. Because we have, we have here, now this is Jessica. Now Jessica uh, was on uh, with uh, uh, Johnny on Headliners a couple weeks ago, and listen to what listen to what she said. And I'm saying, friends, that this is a very common problem. Individuals are relying upon what Daddy said and using that as their standard for truth, and so they're blinded to the actual truth. They're looking at what their father said, and that is that's what's uh, uh, blinding them.
Are you getting any audio in there? I'm getting it out here. All right, we've got all kinds of troubles going on here. Let me see if I can stop this and... Uh, I'm in, uh, I'm in 22, Richard. You getting audio now? Can you show me something recent, yeah. like 2013, why, why instead of showing be, me something from the past? Why does it have to be because there Because people's views change. Oh, you mean you can just okay. change religion? You, sure can, you don't change religion, you can change your view. Uh, and so okay. once you change your view, Opinions does the church change? change? My Wait a minute. My father did not believe in women pastors or ministries. Uh, he evolved his thinking and he evolved what he felt or what he thought about women ministers. And that's why he licensed me and why he respected other minis ministries. Okay, so women, while he was evolving. As, as well as Apostle Campbell. While he was evolving, was his position prior right or his position uh, when he ordained you or whatever you said? Is that right? Which one's right? I believe that women are called to preach. My father no, I didn't said ask you that. that. I said, which one was I, right? You have, my father is deceased, and I cannot answer why he felt what was right or wrong. But I, I didn't ask you that either. I said, which was right? Was it I think right women when he said it wasn't? To preach. I didn't agree with him when he didn't believe well, in women's ministers. Was he ministers. right, or were you right? I didn't believe that it was right when he didn't believe that women were called to was preach. Was he generally. right? When he said I did no. not agree with him. I did so, not so agree with that. I did Her not dad agree with that. This is not a debate. Question. I'm not see, debating see, Charles, you. That's what I'm saying. This book actually did But I'm not going to debate him. I'm it, not. You don't have to debate me. The book's here. This is their well, manual. And keep the manual, reading the book. <laughs> the manual actually says that women cannot preach. All right. But, so <laughs> now they've changed, Charles. But, but, but. All right. Now they've changed it. And, and, and the whole point that we're talking about here, friends, is is here is a, a system that is really at the at the at the any whim uh, uh, any whim uh, of a man. He can come along and change the rules. And here's a man, Jessica's father, did not believe in women preachers, and she thought he was wrong. She didn't agree with him all this time. And then right before right before he died, he licensed her. Now, did changing his mind did that change the truth? Was the truth, was he wrong when he said women can't preach all this time and not letting her preach? Or was he, was he wrong uh, after that? I mean, which is it? Now, you know, and, and Jessica's being asked, you know, what, what was really true? And she's like, well, you can't ask my father. Well, we're asking you. What, was he right or was he wrong? When, when was it right? And what is truth? You see, when individuals are blinded, by simply, well, this is what my father said, or this is what we've always done. That's very dangerous, friends. That's a dangerous uh, uh, standard, really, to be holding to, to say, well, it's what we've always done. And so we need to find out, well, what is truth here? Here's the manual. Here's the guidelines. Here's what they've said. And then they change it for every year. They change it down the line uh, as, as cultures come along, as, as societal norms change, you might say. They change their creed books and their guidelines and their catechisms and their manuals in order to change to fit the people. But friends, truth does not change. Truth does not, does not conform to society. Truth does not conform to the masses. The masses of people or society must conform to the truth. And so when someone says, well, it was wrong then, or it was right then, and then we changed and did the exact opposite, and now it's right and it's still right. Well, you can't be right and do two opposite things, friend. You know? You just try going down the road, and, and you're, you're going through a, a school zone, you're doing 70 and a, and a 45, and then the policeman says, well, you know, uh, I, I'm going to give you a ticket. And you say, well, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're going to change the law. They're going to change the law that says now I can go 70 in a school zone. Well, was it always right? Does that mean it was always right then to go 70 in a school zone? No. You see, so what we're looking at is we're looking at the standard. Now, you can change the standard of a, of a speeding zone. You can change the standard of a speed limit, but you can't change the standard, the objective standard of God's Word. And so if what we're, if what we're doing is really in accordance with truth, 
then what you need to be able to say is, here is where it's backed up in the Bible. But it's very typical. A lot of people are like Jessica. They're saying, well, my father, my, my father uh, t told me this. My father uh, uh, gave me this um, uh, license me. Now, here's what she's going to say. Here's, here's the licensing statement. Can you show me I something recent, yeah. like 2013? Why, why Instead of showing be, me something from the past. Why does it have to be because there Because people's views change. Oh, you mean you can just Opinion? change religion? You, sure can. you don't change religion, you can change your view. Uh, and so okay? once you change your view, Opinions does the church change? change? My Wait a minute. My father did not believe in women pastors or ministries. Uh, he evolved his thinking and he evolved what he felt or what he thought about women ministers and that's why he licensed me 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 all right he he licensed her he licensed now wait a minute he said it was wrong and then he licensed her now friends if if it's true if it's true that women cannot be preachers then how can a man come along and license a woman to be a preacher? Is he God? That, now, that's what we're accused of. We're accused of judging everybody, and we're accused of saying, well, you know, y'all putting yourself up on a pedestal, and y'all judging everybody, and y'all condemning everybody, or saying everybody's right, everybody's wrong. But here are men that come along, and they take their, their, their uh, guidelines and their doctrines, and they say, well, we're right in line with the Bible, and then they come along and they change contrary to the Bible. Now, who's really playing God here? When you go change the rules, you then make yourself God. When you're saying, well, I'm going to change the standard, you're making yourself God. Now, how does a man get to license a woman to preach? Listen to what Paul says. You know, Paul actually uses that same term. 1 Corinthians 14 in verse 34, Paul said, uh, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. It's not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be in obedience, as also saith the law. Now that word permitted, that word permitted is the same word for license. It's translated license in another place. Let me, let me just show you this one. All right. Uh, Acts 21 verse 40. This is Paul. He's giving his defense. And uh, when, he, when he stood and given license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand of the people. All right. He was given permission to speak. He said, can I speak to the people? And the Roman guard gave him permission. They gave him license to speak. And so then that's when Paul spoke. Now, where does a woman get the license to speak? See, I find it very interesting that men actually use a word that the Bible uses, and they use it, they use it uh, uh, in exactly the opposite way that God used it. Paul was given license to speak, but yet in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34, he says, it's not licensed. I don't license a woman to speak. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. It's not permitted. It's not licensed unto them to speak. They don't have a license. Now, friends, tell me, how can a woman be a preacher? How could she be a, be a preacher and not be licensed to speak? That'd be, that'd be kind of silly, wouldn't it? Well, I, I'm, a, I, I'm, a, I'm a driver, but I'm not licensed to drive. Well, you're not really a driver then. So, well, I, I, I've got a car that I can drive, but I don't have a license to drive. Well, then you can't drive. Not legally. So where does a man get the authority to license a woman to speak? Now, here's what Paul's going to say again in 1 Timothy 2, verse 12. He says, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but be in silence. So again, I suffer. I permit not. I do not license a woman to teach nor self authority of man. How is that possible? Then for women, like Jessica or anybody else, to say, well, I have a license to preach. Well, where would you get your license? Well, I got it from my daddy. 
I got it from my father. I got it from the bishop. I got it from the, from, uh, uh, the chief apostle of the world, whoever. Well, he didn't get it from God. And he does not have the authority. He does not have the license to give you a license. Now let's think about that. Let's go back to the car illustration here. Can you imagine the policeman stopping you and, you say, and he says, let me see your license. And he says, where'd you get this license? Well, James gave me this license. Yeah, James, he told me to come by his house and he gave me a driver's license. That's why I can drive. That's not a valid license. Now you just try that sometime. I tell you what, you just try. Don't, don't, you're not going to get one from me. So don't say you got it from me. I'm not going to give you one. But you say, well, you know what? I just had a buddy make this up. My father made me this driver's license. You know, see my picture on here? I, I made it look good. It's, it's a license. I'm, I'm permitted to drive. And the policeman not only going to take you to jail for driving without a license, he's probably going to take you to jail or charge you with a, a, a falsifying ID. See that? So, friends, where is it that men then get the right to give license to people that God never licensed. God did not give the woman permission to preach. But yet, when you ask someone, where did you get your license? Well, I got it from my father. Now, are they or are they not blinded from the truth by their emotional ties or by what they've always been taught from their fathers? They're, they're blinded by the father. And so when people hear the truth, they say, well, they can't be right because my fathers didn't tell me to say that. You know, my mama didn't believe that. My daddy didn't believe what you're saying. Therefore, it can't be right. Now, friends, I can imagine how hard it would be to hear the truth and be told now something you're doing is not permitted or it's not right. It's, it's sinful or that you can't do it anymore. But friends, you are not in the same position as the Jews were. The Jews, they had been in their religion for 1,500 years, and it was licensed by God. It was sanctioned by God. And so I can see why they might have difficulty letting go of the law of Moses and grabbing onto the truth of the New Testament. Because they had been holding on to a law that was sanctioned by God. But friend, what you're holding on to has not been sanctioned by God never has been sanctioned by God. Now the Jews were blinded from the truth by something God had given. But they were looking at it totally wrong. It should have been that the, that the law was telling them, look for the Christ and you need to obey the Christ. As a matter of fact, Deuteronomy 18 and 18, the law said that when uh, God raised up a prophet, you're supposed to, uh, like, like Moses, you're supposed to listen to him. He said, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I'll put my words in his mouth, and he shall uh, speak, and he shall speak unto them all that I command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall, uh, will not hearken unto my words, which, shall, which he shall speak in my name, I'll require it of him. So you're supposed to listen to that prophet. Jesus was that prophet that God raised up like Moses. And yet they weren't going to listen to him. They did, not want to, they did not want to listen to him because they were so tied to the law of Moses. Well, I can see why they might do that. I can see why they would have that, that bond with the law of Moses. But friends, what you have is not even in the Bible. What you have never has been licensed, never has been sanctioned. Are you so blinded to the truth that you can't see that, that you can't find it in the Bible? Are you so blinded to the truth that you can't see that what you have been believing all this time is not in the Bible? I appreciate the lady that called in and talked to Mark and Micah. I believe she said she's in the Catholic Church. I, I'm, I'm glad she's watching. I hope she's still watching. But we love and appreciate her for watching. But I just want you to see her think. If you're in a religion like the Catholic Church that's not in the Bible, it never was really sanctioned by God then. So... Why would you be in that religion? Why would you believe something, follow something that you really can't find in God's book? You can't find the Word of God. So that you can't find the Baptist church in the Bible. You have people, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a Baptist. Jerry Carter right over here at 
at the at the uh, uh, Reedsville Baptist Church. You know, I'm, I was Baptist born and Baptist bred, and when I'm died, I'm Baptist dead. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. But you're not a Christian because you're not. You can't find it in the Bible. You can't find what you did in the Bible. You can't find the form of doctrine that you obeyed in the Bible. And so, we're saying, are you blinded to the truth by what your what your father said? Now, here's what happens, friends. Here's the danger. Here's the danger of being so blinded to the truth is that you start missing the truth. You start, you start missing uh, uh, the truth because you just can't see it. Now, I want you to notice something. I want you to notice. Here, here's a, a danger of, of this attitude, this mentality. Now, Jessica is going to say, don't bring up the past. Now, I want you to see how dangerous this is because you're actually saying, I don't want to hear God's word on the matter. All right? Listen to what she says. You're saying? 30 seconds, Johnny. Where do you think Jessica is right now? Um, I think she's very deluded. And the fact that she won't uh, talk about a past. I mean, can you imagine saying that the past, everything you did in the past doesn't matter? I mean, what other world or part of the world would you actually say that, that the past doesn't matter? All things are passed away. Again, I don't talk We're about the time. past because the past is not matter. Present matters. Present matters. Have a good evening. All right. All things are passed away. The, 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 the only, only thing that matters is the present. Now, let's think about that for a minute. Jessica just said she doesn't even want to listen to the Bible. Oh, oh, James, I never said that now. Didn't you hear her say she didn't want to hear the Bible? She said, now she quoted the Bible, but she doesn't want the past. Well, she didn't want Johnny to read from a book that was written two years ago. That was, I believe it was two, two years ago. 2011, it was when, when their creed book was, was modified well if she doesn't want to hear a book that was written two years ago about what her particular church believes why would then she quote a book that was written over 2,000 years ago hmm makes you kind of wonder doesn't it now you can't listen to things that are in the past no 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 can't listen to things in the past well you just eliminate the Bible if you don't want to listen to something that was that was written two years ago when being questioned about why you believe what you believe, then it stands to reason that you certainly don't want to hear what was written 2,000 years ago. All right? But the past, to say the past is not relevant or the past is not necessary, listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 15, verse 4, For what sort of things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scripture might have hope. The Old Testament was even given for a, 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 as a, a, a teaching tool, something to learn by. The Old Testament was actually, friends, the Old Testament was like a, 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 the ABCs and the one, two, threes. It was the, it was the fundamentals that were teaching Israel what they needed to do in order to be pleased to God. It taught them how to be obedient to God. It taught them how to please God, how to serve God. It taught them the consequences of disobeying God. It showed them the, the, uh, how great and how terrible sin was. That's what the law was, was for. That's what it was designed for. And so it was the teaching blocks. It was the teaching tool. And Paul said those things that are written aforetime were for our learning. You can still learn something from that. But not if you go to the past. Not if you go to the past. She said... I mean, Jessica, no, I don't want to hear the past. Well, you don't want to hear the Old Testament. Now, Jessica, where are you going to get your instrumental music? Where are you going to get your tithes? Where are you going to get your offerings? Where are you going to get all those things? I'm going to get them from the Bible. Oh, no, you can't go to the past. See that? Now, see, friends, the point I'm making here is it's, it, it turns in, you start saying silly things. I mean, hyper silly, stupid. All right, that's ignorance gone to seed to say, I don't want to hear, I don't want to talk about the past. That's a cop out. If you don't want to talk about the past, then you can get rid of the Bible. But you know what? The Bible's full of, of verses about the past. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 10, verse 6. Paul said, Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. You see, it's, it's a lesson, it's a, it's, a, 
It's a picture. It's a, a description, an illustration of just how bad sin is. You need to learn from that. You need to learn from that. 1 Corinthians 10, verse uh, 11. Now are these things happening to them for in samples? And they are written for eye admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. They are examples to us. Oh, but we can't look at that. We can't leave the past. You can get rid of your history books. See? I guess Jessica would be awful. Let's don't study history. Let's, let's forget history. You know? When you have historical events coming up, anniversary historical events, oh, let's, don't, let's don't think about them. Nope, nope, can't go in the past. That's silly, friends. But that's what blinds you to the truth. See, when you're so blind to the truth, you start saying silly things. You start doing silly things. You say, well, I don't want to hear the Bible. I don't want to hear the truth. But uh, here's another one, Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, in verse, uh, verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You know why people get caught up in religion and worshiping God in ways contrary to the Bible? Because they've forgotten the past. They're doing exactly what Jessica said. Don't give me the past. Don't give me the Bible. Don't, I don't want to know what they did in the first century. I mean, Jessica don't even want to know what they did two, two, two years ago in her church. It doesn't surprise me that she doesn't want to know what they did 2,000 years ago in the Lord's church. See that? Oh, don't give me, no. I don't want to hear the past. Well, if you don't want to hear the past, you don't want to learn from the examples of disobedience. That's what unbelief is, disobedience. That's exactly what it is. When you don't believe, you don't obey. When you don't obey, you don't believe. That's exactly what God said. In, in, in Hebrews 4, verse 11, that's exactly the picture that he's painting, painting that they, they were told, they were told to go, to go into the land, and they didn't go. And he said, because of disobedience. That's what he told Moses. So you disobeyed me. But here the Hebrew writer says because of unbelief. All right? So don't fall after unbelief. Don't be disobedient. But if you don't learn from the past, if you don't lose the book, and you're going to just be have your blinders on to the truth, and all you're focusing on is what Father said or what we've always done, you're going to be blinded to the truth. You're going to miss it. You want, you want another one? You want another one? First, uh, let's see here. Uh, 2 Peter, 2 Peter 2 in verse 6. 2 Peter 2, verse 6. Peter says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. Friends, we still have that example today. And people are ignoring it. They, they're, they're like Jessica. They don't want to talk about the past. Sodom and Gomorrah is still a term that we use for debauchery or for society that's given over to hed hedonism, you know, to uh, uh, gratifying their, their lust and their desires and hedonism on themselves. Sodom and Gomorrah. I, I don't want to talk about the past. I don't want to talk about the past. I want to forget the past. I don't want to, I'm, I'm living right here in the present. Well, if you may be living right here in the present, but if you forget the past, you, you're doomed to repeat it. Isn't that what the saying says? And how much more important it is for you to remember the past when it comes to serving God so that you don't repeat that past. But Peter says, Peter says that's exactly what people do. They are, they're willfully ignorant, willfully ignorant of of the past. Let's see here. 2 Peter 3. I believe that's right. Uh, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days. This is 2 Peter 3 3. Knowing this first, there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were uh, from, the, from the beginning. Uh, of the creation, verse 5. And he says, 
For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in, in the water. Uh, verse 6, Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. They're willfully ignorant of that. And that's the way people are in religion today. They say, I, I don't want to see it. Don't hear it. I'm, I'm blinded to the truth. I'm snow blinded. I'm blinded from knowledge of the Word of God. Well, is that really where you want to be, friends? Is that really where you want to be? Here again, Jude says in June 7, Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them, in like manner, give themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set for the example, suffering and vengeance of eternal fire. But you say that today. You say that today and oh no. You know, you, you can't talk about, you can't talk about the, the wickedness of fornication and going after strange flesh. Or you'll get kicked off your TV program. Well, we may get kicked off our TV program one day. I don't know. But I'm still going to say it. Homosexuality is sin. And the examples of societies that have condoned and promoted and let that come to the forefront have always fallen. They've always gone to ruin. Now, you can, be, you can turn a blind eye to it. You can turn a blind eye to the knowledge, friends. You, you're not helping things. You're not helping. You're on, a, you're on a word from the Lord. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, Charles of Danville. I don't see nothing wrong with a woman wants to preach, and especially Jessica wants to preach, and most likely that's all I'm going to say on it because... Uh, there's nothing wrong with women wanting to preach because it's just what's going to go in the future. That's how life is going now. Okay. Have a good evening. So, so you, you, you know, I love these drive-by callers. You know, I, I just want to fire a shot at you, and you know, I don't see nothing wrong with just what you. I don't care what you see, sir. I don't care what you see. Obviously, you're just as blind to the Bible as Jessica wants to be. I don't see nothing wrong with well. Who made you God where you can determine, well, this is what I, I think is okay? You know? I, I, it's really not up to what you think or what I think. It's about what God thinks. Now, we might as well just get rid of the Bible. Maybe you need to go find the local atheist and help him flush it down the toilet. That's the way you feel about the Bible. I don't know. But my, my point, sir, is if we're going to say the Bible is the standard, and Jessica would say that, and she's going to follow the Bible, but really she's not. All right? So, you know, is, is this the standard that we're going for? Is this, the, is this how we're turning a blind eye? Good example. Appreciate the call. A good example of turning a blind eye. Now, uh, let's notice this. Let's notice this. Blinded by traditions. People, people are blinded by uh, by traditions. What do I mean by that? In Matthew 15, verse 9, Jesus said, In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Matthew 15, 9. In vain they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Their traditions, traditions are what they were holding to, and Jesus said, that, That's not good enough. Well, that's what people are doing today. They're using their traditions as the, as the standard by what is acceptable. Well, things are changing so women can preach. Things are changing so homosexuals, they can get married. Things are changing so, well, friends, again, the truth doesn't change. Now, what about this? This was a topic that came up, too, in that, in that uh, discussion on um, uh, headliners about contentment versus consuming. Now, friends, I, I say this is the tradition because in our, in our society, we have a tradition of consuming. We have a tradition of consuming. Now, let's just, I want to show you some pictures here. And you tell me which one looks more like contentment and what looks like consuming. Now, here's a man sitting on a pier. He's looking out over his lake, nice, still, calm, morning or evening. I'd say morning. Fog, steam rolling up off the, off the lake. Peaceful, serene. To me, that's a picture of contentment. But look at this picture. 
Look at this picture. Here are people fighting, striving to get in the, in the, in the, in the doors of the, of the local stores. Black Friday. You know, I, I still can't get over the irony of on Thursday, we give thanks for our blessings. It was a, a day set aside for the thanksgiving of God to God for all the blessings that he's given. And then the very next day, we're going to go consume. We're going to stand in line. We're going to go out and get up at midnight. And we're going to go and we're going to fight. And we're going to fight the crowds. We're going to risk getting run over, trampled, beaten. Because we're trying to get some stuff. Look at this. Here's, here's a good example. Now, you tell me, is this, is this really uh, uh, contentment? Is this, is this what the Bible says about contentment? <laughs> Break it up. Arrest somebody. Now, let's, let's get back to what the Bible is saying here. The Bible is going to tell us that we should be content. That we should be content. In 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy, uh, chapter 6 and verse 6 through 8, let's notice this. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 6. Paul says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can tarry, carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Let's be content with that. All right? Let's look at another one. In Philippians 4, in verse 11, Paul's going to say, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. All right? I'm, I'm content here. Now, on the program, on the program that, uh, uh, where this was uh, being talked about, Charles actually asked about Christmas, and this is what started it. But Hebrews 13.5 says that your conversation, that your manner of life, the way you live, be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have, for he said that I will never leave thee or forsake thee. He's not talking about, well, I'm going to get all my stuff and I'm going to be content with that. Because chances are you're not going to be content if you're constantly trying to consume. Now, listen to what our, listen to what our uh, license, local licensed, uh, per her father, preacher said. And you tell me if this fits contentment or consumerism. Uh, again, I'm opposed to the idea of, okay, if we already have uh, certain things, then why? I mean, you think about the way we're made. We're never satisfied. If you've got four dresses and or, or five dresses, that's a dress for every day of the work week. What's wrong with that? Why? No, I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. I'm saying why do you need to continue on? I mean, you, have you seen closets that people have? I have one of those. People's closets are bigger than bedrooms now. Yeah, you know? but, but if she wants to spend... But uh, if I want to spend that and I have that closet, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with me having clothing for every day of the year? Every day of the year? Six, and 365 not, different clothes? Yes, sir. Okay. And it's not that I'm not satisfied. I like clothes. Okay. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with me having clothing for every day of the year? Every day of the year, six, 365 different clothes? Yes, sir. Okay. And it's not that I'm not satisfied. I like clothes. Okay. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with me having clothing for every day of the year? Every day of the year, six, 365 different clothes? Yes, sir. Okay. And it's not that I'm not satisfied. I like clothes. Okay. It's, it's basically... <laughs> I enjoy clothing, so I'm living in excess. All right. Clo uh, something for every, every day of the year. Different set of clothes for every, every day of the year. 
Well, friends, is that, is that consumerism? Is that contentment? Is that, is that really contentment? I, I've got some clothes. I'm, I'm, I'm wearing something different every day of the year. You know what? Let me give you this verse. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30, verses 7 through 9. The wise man says, Two things, two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny the Lord and say, who is, who is the Lord? And deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of God in vain. And so the wise man is saying, you know what? You don't need to be rich. You don't need to be poor. You need to be content with just what is convenient, just what you need. Now, I find it very interesting that, that Jessica is not being much different than the atheist. Saying, well, if I want to, what's wrong with that? Now, that's, that's the very standard that the, that the hedonist says. Says, well, you know what? If it feels good, I'm going to do it. That's great. See, that's what we're getting into, friends, because we don't want to hear the truth. We're blinded to the truth where the Bible says, you know, refrain yourself, control yourself. And so we're now drifting into covetousness and consumerism and consuming it upon our lust. You're on a word from the Lord. Caller, you're on a word from the Lord. You, you know who this is. Uh, I got a couple things I'd like to say. Okay. Um, I, I don't believe a woman should be a preacher, but I understand her helping with children at church. Right. Now, and, and, I, and you understand, we didn't say she couldn't teach. We just said she couldn't teach nor use authority over a man, right? That's what the Bible's saying. Right. Right? Okay. That, that, that's why I'm saying that she can help children and stuff like that, because that helps as a church a lot. Right, right. Uh-huh. Let, I understand that. Yeah. But, and some else, uh, you might think that I'm wrong, but... Um, I believe in the devil, but I don't. You believe in the devil, but you don't. Right. And I'll tell you what I mean. I'm I'm not going to give him no praise. I don't think about him, so I'm not going to give him no praise. Okay. Because that's what he wants me to give him praise like okay. to do Jesus. Is that wrong? Well, yeah, I I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, Paul said, you know, we... We know our enemy. You know, we're not, we're not uh, uh, ignorant of his devices. So it's one thing to know that Satan is, is working, that, his, you know, that, the, that the powers that he uses to ensnare us are at work, and another thing to simply to serve him by doing his bidding. And I think that's what you're saying, you know. I, I agree with you. I'm going to focus on the good things, the wholesome things, giving... Uh, giving praise to God by the service that, by my life, by giving my life in service to Him rather than uh, to the devil. So, yeah, I see your point. I, I, I think that's a good point. Okay, uh, uh, one other thing I'd like to say to you. All right. What's that, what's that one preacher from Texas? It's on TV. He's got that big thing all the time, him and his son. Uh, which one? Oh, uh, John Hagee. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you can listen. You can listen to Hagee, and he's always telling you the world's going to end and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's a big let's support Israel guy too. And uh, and the whole time he's telling you to send it, send your money to him. Right. The world's going to end. Why does he need the money? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, all right. I thank you for your call. Thank you for your call, hey, man. You have a blessed day and a, ha a happy Christmas, sir. You too. Thank you. All right. All right, now, friends. So, so here's what we're talking about. Are we are we talking about uh, turning a blind eye to what the Bible warns us about? I mean, the Bible's warning us about consuming these things upon ourselves, and yet we can't listen to the Bible because it's in the past. Now, James says in James uh, four and verse one. I think uh, Johnny quoted this. You know, from whence come. Wars and fightings among you come down the hands of your lust and war that warn your members. Well, what was that at Walmart on Black Friday that we just showed? Was that not individuals fighting over stuff 
so that they could consume it upon their lust? If that wasn't a, a video description of what James was talking about, I don't know what is. Individuals fighting over things that they want to consume because they're consumers. <clears throat> and so, you know, we don't, we don't want to be blind to that truth. Now, I wanted to get into this. I don't have much time, but I do want to hit this. I do want to hit this. Here's another thing, friends, individuals turn a blind eye to. They, they, they're blinded to the knowledge about this. You know, I hear people talk about, well, Kwanzaa's a made-up holiday. You know, uh, uh, all these different made-up holidays. Well, Christmas is a made-up holiday, too. It's not in the Bible. As far as Jesus is born in a manger, that's all made up. Men made that up. And so, are you going to turn a blind eye to the truth and say, oh, I'm going to worship Jesus on this day? Jesus never asked you to worship him on the day he was born. Evidence, we've shown this before on, on this program. There's more evidence that he was born either in the spring or, or, or the, uh, the summer rather than the winter. And so what you need to realize is that there's truth there. Are you going to turn a blind eye to it? I mean, the encyclopedia will tell you that the, uh, the origin of, of uh, a Christmas, the observant of Christmas is not a divine appointment, nor is it the New Testament origin. The day of Christ's birth cannot be ascertained from the New Testament or indeed from any other source. The church fathers for the first three centuries do not speak of any special observance of the nativity that is the birth of Christ. That's from uh, uh, the Cyclopedia of uh, uh, McClintock and Strong. There's, there's no record of this being done in the first century in the church. That's why in the Lord's church, you don't see, you don't see us decorating our buildings. We don't put wreaths on the door and Christmas trees in the foyer and, and, and all these things. We don't celebrate that as the, the birth of Christ. Why? Because we haven't turned a blind eye to the truth. We know what the Bible says about the matter. So, friends, I hope that, I hope that uh, you won't turn a blind eye to the truth. I hope you're not blinded to the truth. I hope we've helped open your eyes some. Friends, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I want to take this caller, but I don't have time for it. Uh, and I apologize for the... Uh, uh, the, the glitch at the, at the front end, but if you'd like to reach us, we'd be, hope to see you. Until uh, next time, friends, we'll see you next year. Always remember to ask what does the Bible say and you get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. We also have the story that the candidate who has already announced that he plans to run for Rockingham County's District Attorney's Office is not happy with a sentence that was handed down in Rockingham County Superior Court on Monday where a young man, 18 years old, admitted that he did set a church fire. It seems like the candidate is not happy with that, and we'll tell you what he had to say coming up in just a little bit. And in Caswell County, it looks like Thelma and Louise may have hit a convenience store there. Two women accused of breaking into a convenience store. We have surveillance.